I'll tell you what, I don't I am mad at Michael. Straight. Let's talk let's we'll talk about it. I mean, if Andy would ever get started. We're rolling. We're rolling. Welcome in, Michael. Randy Miller. Hey, Michael Seward is in the house. Not the same house. <laughs> right. We're in a different house. And Randy. Yes. Where can we get your new book? I see the sign behind you. Where where do we get that at? Oh, I don't want to I don't want to <laughs> spend all this time on the podcast <laughs> talking about my book. Um, <laughs> let's see. Where can you get it? Where mm. you get it? Uh, mm. I will tell you pretty soon you're going to be able to get it at the mm. airport. Oh, it's wow. It's going to be on uh, it's going to be in all the shops at the airport so that before you catch a flight, you pick up, you know, mm. you know and you could probably finish it on the plane. It's not a it's not a giant tome, but uh, it'll be, it's going to leave you it's going to leave you breathless. It's going to leave you laughing. It's going <laughs> to it, it's going to it's going to make you feel like a huckleberry. Really, <laughs> but but really? In, in, in the meantime, uh, you can get it at randymillerradio.com. And I do want to thank everybody who's bought a copy. Uh, all the proceeds, as you know, Michael, go mm -hmm. to uh, Kansas City Fisher House which uh, gives services and lodging for uh, wounded veterans' families when they come into the uh, VA. It's like the Ronald McDonald House for, for vets. And so um, that's, that's what we're doing it for. And uh, everybody has been so nice, so complimentary uh, on the book, and I, I do thank you for that. Uh, it's a story of, of, of pain. It's a story of uh, romance. Uh, it's, it's a story of, uh, of many firings and, uh, and, and there's a, there's a brief little story of a donkey. Oh, but, really? Yeah. But it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's something I, I, I'm very proud of it. It's, it's, uh, it's the second book that I've written. Uh, this book has not been colored in yet. And so, uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I would, uh, if you go to randymillerradio.com, you can uh, pick up a copy and it's. I mean, it's going to be the maybe the smartest thing you've ever done. So, and um, you have personalized some of the books, is that right, Randy? Because, mm -hmm. well, yeah. I got one personalized, and uh, I think it pretty much said uh, Mike uh, from Randy. Mm -hmm. And then my dad got one recently, and he had like a paragraph in his. So I don't know how right. that works. Yeah, that uh, your the signing in yours was a mistake. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, I do. I do. I try, I try to personalize uh, each and each yeah, every, like every one of them. And uh, I actually just uh, uh, getting ready to send one to my, my buddy, Johnny Dare, uh, who, by the way, I just heard something about Johnny. Yeah, is uh, is uh, suffering with a little uh, uh, pancreas situation, but uh, hmm. he's he's going to do well and, uh, and and get back to the radio and, and everything will be good. So. Uh, yeah, our, our, our best to Johnny yeah. and his family. Um, and just to jump in on that, one of, one of the classic moments is when you and Johnny Dare traded studios. And, yeah, that, uh, that was fun. That was fun. April Fool's, yeah. Yeah, April Fool's Day <laughs> turned the rock into Tractor 99, and uh, Johnny came <laughs> over to Q104. And I heard he didn't want to leave your studio. It was a little different. He setup. did. He really didn't. It was a much nicer situation, very cushy. And, right. and I did want to leave the studio at the rock <laughs> because you, I mean, you actually sit on a rock when you're over there and it's not, okay. it's not very comfortable. But uh, so <laughs> let, let's get down to why, why we're here, Michael. Mm -hmm. um, you and I and our, our lovely wives we're at the Kansas City Air Show together. We were. Fantastic air show, right? Uh, this air show, what took place has never happened in Kansas City before. Right, right. The Blue Angels and the Thunderbirds flying together, which they never do at they the don't. same air show. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just fantastic. And so for many years, and I, maybe it, I might have a, a picture here. Um, you know, for many years, we talked about our, our experience uh, with with the Blue Angels because I right. I flew with the Blue Angels um, was lucky enough to fly with the Blue Angels. I mean that's what an honor that is mm -hmm. uh, for about ninety minutes and uh, and I know when I told you that originally you told me you had flown with the Blue Angels and it was just something 
that I took you at your word. Uh, and, and so, you know, when we were at the air show, there's the Blue Angels F-18 sitting on the tarmac. And I kind of pointed over and I, I asked you, I said, now, is that, is that what you flew in? And you looked very puzzled. And you said, no, no. And I said, well, that's what the, that's what the Blue Angels use. And, uh, and you said, well, um, it, it wasn't exactly the Blue Angels. It was in honor of the Blue Angels. Can, can you, I mean, just kind of shed some light on the, the lie that you've been living? Well, Randy, that's a little, probably a little strong. Hmm. Um, you know, I guess what, how I'd frame this is we both have ridden in fighter jets, and both of them in honor of Blue Angels. Mine was and, not in honor of the Blue Angels. Mine was actually with <laughs> the Blue Angels. Okay. It was so, an honor for me to ride with the Blue Angels. That might have been where the... Yeah. the well, here's, here's the thing. We both were in super fast fighter jet planes. That Yours was a Blue Angel, Angel 7. Mine was painted in honor of Angel 7, Blue Angel 7. You wouldn't have known the difference, but... And full disclosure, uh, I flew in an L-39 Albatross, a, uh, a jet plane, a uh, low-flying combat plane. So I guess my question to you is, Yeah, what, what I've seen, I've, I know there's videotape that you have somewhere that you've been reluctant for years, right. reluctant to release the tape. This is, this is kind of back to a call to action. This is kind of my call to action to say, would you release tape of both of us in our fighter jets doing a barrel roll? Right. Both of us doing a right. barrel roll. We'll show it on this show. Sure. And and I'd like to see if any one of us are either throwing up or maybe we pass out for a minute. I just want to go toe to toe. I I can furnish any kind of video that you need. Okay. Okay. Um, and if you want to show me uh, uh you know some pictures of you getting on a southwest airlines <laughs> flight that's fine uh whatever you know whatever mm -hmm. it happens to be that's fine okay okay uh, but i will uh yeah we'll, we'll make that happen what we'll do is stick the nose down get a little over 250 knots pull it up to 15 degrees stop it and roll ready ready right now all right uh, got a little more than 250 knots there We'll pull it up 15 degrees. Go! Oh! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That's great. Oh. 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 Holy cow. Is there anything else you'd like to come clean about? Because obviously I, I believe that story. Um, is your name Michael Seward? Is that your real name? <laughs> you know, uh, I'm going to take a little spin here, Randy. Uh, one of the things I've appreciated that we've done here on Randy Miller Radio a few times with some of our yeah, guests, right? Uh, and it's gone over pretty well, but you've kind of fine-tuned it a bit for one of your other shows, speaking okay. of the Blue Angels, and that is the uh, uh, for the National Defense. You yeah. Do a thing, you do a thing now called uh, uh, Got Your Got Your Six. Got Your Six, that's right. Got Your because, Back. Uh, that means Got Your Back, and it's a uh, big, you know, they say that in the military a lot. So we have a, a segment now that we do with, with some celebrities. In fact, uh, I did one of these today. We have hmm. uh, on the national defense, we also have a thing called the executive leadership series. Okay. Hmm. We invite heads of companies on today. We had Jay Farner, the CEO of Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage. And so we did a little got your six with Jay and hmm. it's always a fun thing. People are always uh, a little bit trepidatious about it. Because, you know, they don't know what's what's coming, but that's what makes it fun. And and they and they have a lot of fun with it. Uh, but before we get into any of that, can I just okay. mention one thing that you do? Do you consider yourself a fairly observant person, Michael? I, I do my best, Randy. I do my best. So I've had a beard and mustache for the last 20 some odd years. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I did notice something. I did gone. notice that. Well, I it's just, and I can't picture. put, I'm, I'm not sure if it's oil of Olathe, what it, it is it about is Randy. Oil of Olathe. And, and I will tell you, don't feel bad about that because <laughs> I sent a picture to my wife right after I did it. Nothing. My daughters really? have not noticed. 
I was at dinner with some close friends sitting directly across from them. So here's what I've concluded about at my age, shaving off your beard and mustache, because every time I've done it in the past, my wife is, uh, is strongly protested. And, but she's always said, you look like you're 12 years old. Well, now I just look like an old man who shaved his beard and mustache. No. And so, no. yeah. And, 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 and so I, what, what I want to do now is I'm going to grow some giant beard and see if anybody <laughs> notices. I thought we were just going to do a little night at the Roxbury in Raytona Beach, Raytown. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Get oh your suit God. on. I mean, okay. nobody has noticed. I noticed. Trust me, all of Kansas City has noticed now. And, no. and that's what's going to – I want to go right into this, Randy. Okay, good. Uh, so you, you have begun being interviewed, especially because of your book now, by everybody. Everybody's had you on their shows. They're right. interviewing Randy right. now. So the tables have right. turned a bit. Well, I want to turn the tables a little bit now and i want to and usually you conclude the show with this but i want to kick it off with got your six with randy i got some rapid fire questions for randy to answer six are you rapid ready fire questions okay i'm ready and, and i want to tell you they don't have to be that rapid i mean they don't right. here you go so let's i would like to hit randy. slow it down most talked about cable company yeah randy yeah yeah and and we'll get to this later in the show but uh Okay, we're going to pass on the first question. <laughs> no, no, I no, I I am not passing on it. It's a, uh, it's a uh, century stink is what we call it out in my neck of the oh, world. Okay, yeah. century century stink. Yeah. Okay. Um. Here here's a pick one for you. Thirty five thousand dollars cash in your pocket, or a two hundred fifty thousand dollar ride in Sir Richard Branson's. Virgin Galactic, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a little space travel. Yeah, or thirty five thousand dollars cash, Randy. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Thirty five thousand in my pocket, or, or nothing in my pocket. Well, it's it's, it's two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a right. seat. Right. Yeah, I, 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 I get. I understand the question. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna go for the I'm gonna go for the space ride. You are. I'm going to go for the space ride. Absolutely. And my wife asked me the same question. In fact, she she suggested it. Okay. <laughs> well, you've been training on your jet plane, the, the Blue Angel. So maybe maybe you're right. ready. Randy. Right. <laughs> and, and apparently, according to you, I'm not. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> How about? Uh, it, it, and I've already been on Branson Airlines, but that's a totally different. Oh. That was a <laughs> okay. different deal. Um. How about um. First joke that pops in your head, Randy. First joke pops in your head. <laughs> well, the first one I can't say. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Uh, we can come back to that question if you want. This is a family-friendly show, Randy. Right. Uh, well, okay. Pass, pass, pass. No, I, you know what? I will. Uh, yeah, let's come back to that one. <laughs> all right. I got, all right. We're get, you're going to make it tough. I'm going to make it tough on you if we're going to play that way. <laughs> um, favorite dog, Satchmo or Wags? Let me go back to favorite joke. All right. And this is a problem we're having at the ranch. Okay. It is moles. We're mm. having mole problems. Do mm. you know what you see when you look down a mole hole? I don't, Randy. Molasses. <laughs> um, <clears throat> favorite character or favorite character on the randy miller radio show back to your book that didn't make it in your book or next chapter Who? oh oh the next uh little uh little uh sequel yeah if it went on uh we talked about les manley we talked about roy dean we talked about mr stress uh ira gumsore maybe ira gumsore made it Oh, you know what? I was actually just talking about this to someone today. When I was in Atlanta, mm. this is so this is so stupid. This is another thing like, what would you do for money kind of deal. Uh, so my producer and I, his name was Harry, it is, he still is his name, Harry Schuster. And uh, the reason I even bring this up is because I got a new phone today. And the, the guy that sold me the phone, when I walked in, said, does anybody ever told you you look like Dan Aykroyd? 
I said, no, no. And he said, I, yeah, I don't know what it is. I said, I said well, I just shaved my beard and mustache. But he said, uh, yeah, you just kind of look. And, and so when I was in Atlanta, Levi's came out with their 501 blue jeans. And they called them 501 blues. Okay. Harry, yeah. Schuster, Harry, Harry Schuster, who looks a little bit like John Belushi and I became the 501 Blues Brothers. And we performed at a department store when they introduced the 501 Blue Jeans. And we did Soul Man and we did, I mean, we really? actually, yeah, we did the whole thing. And so, yeah, that's, that's probably going to be the next book. Okay. Yeah. Well, for me, I, you, there's so many things you didn't get to get to in your book, like the uh, Stiff the Stiff was one of my favorites. Stuff the Stiff was fantastic. Stuff the Stiff. That, yeah. that's, why, that's why they won't carry my books at Rainy Day Books. Seriously. Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Tell, tell everybody else why. All right, because they, they, uh, they had all of these authors that either came to town or they had a press release. And like we one of them was bird watching. I remember one was on bird watching. Bird watching. And so I mean, you would tell all the guests beforehand. 98% of the press releases you get from authors are horrible. I mean, they're, they're, they're going to be horrible guests, but we never said no. So we would invite them on the show and tell the listeners beforehand, call in your stupidest questions because this person is not going to be interesting at all. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think, they would call in these questions for these people that were so good. And we'd give a cash prize for the best, best stupid question. And of course, since you're on there to plug your book, you're going to ask or answer every question. So we would do that. And I think rainy day books. <laughs> oh, uh, I think that's, they're not, you can't find this book at rainy day books. So. I'll just some people never forget, do they, Randy? Uh, they, they, they don't. <laughs> they do. <laughs> yeah. All right. How about most memorable celebrity? Like done six or ten. Well, we've I mean, done a few. Most memorable celebrity that you've interviewed recently in the last year or so. You've had you've had a ton. Matthew McConaughey. Okay. Was was much better than I expected. Very can very candid, very good, very down to earth. Let's see who else. We had a great time the other day with Savannah Guthrie from the Today Show. We did a Got Your Six with her. She was great. Oh, oh, who else was it that uh, did the entire song? Oh, uh, Garner or uh, Jennifer Garner. That's it. Yes, she that was, was great. All. She was great. Yeah, she was fantastic. You don't. You, you don't. You got her to sing an entire like, wasn't it like the Tennessee th or whatever theme song, Virginia or wherever she's from, or West Virginia theme song. That's it. Yeah. As, uh, grew up <laughs> in West Virginia. But you know who I didn't expect to be a fantastic guest, and who we've had him on twice now was the author James Patterson. He is, uh, I mean, a guy has played golf with Bill Clinton. He's played golf with Donald Trump. He's just he's fascinating. So. Yeah. <clears throat> well, maybe maybe just this one's kind of lame. Last one is best burger you've had recently, and where you got it at. Oh, I, everybody I, wants to know. Everybody, okay. well, I mean, wants no, to know. I do. I, I listen. I have I have a great answer for that, and it's funny because you and I have eaten at this place called Wahlburgers, Mark yeah. Wahlburgers' place, and it, and and I did like it. I I really liked it. What what was the kind of burger that we had? Is a jalapeno burger. Yeah. Yeah. I got my wife to recreate that jalapeno burger because you can buy the burgers now at High V. Okay. And, and uh, that that is one of the best. How, how about you? You know, I, honestly, I'd probably say the same thing. Yeah, that was great. I'd probably say it is so good. You know, it, it might be a $20 burger and sweet potato fries when you leave Wahlburgers, but Right. Pretty good. So anyway, so now Renee's taking it on. Yeah. Yeah. She's now. Uh, let's see. You know what? That's so funny. You mentioned that. I've got a got your six for you. Oh, really? Yeah. I really well, it's not the Michael Seward radio show, is it? No, but it, it's, uh, it's, it's <laughs> really appropriate. Um, I still want to get back to most talked about cable company and get around to that. But OK. Yeah, oh, yeah. We, we definitely okay. will. Okay. All right. How many local news anchors can you name? 
Uh, we're going to go. I mean, I don't want to leave anybody out. Should right. we go through this? Sure. sure. Um, we're going to go with Mark Offert. We're going to go with Chris Ketz. Okay. Uh, we're going to go they with. They've both been uh, guests on this show. Huh? They've both been guests on this yeah, show. They have. They have. Uh, well, Larry Moore, Ron Burgundy. Do, do, what parameters do we have? Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if he's local. Oh, okay. But yeah. Um, how about Martin Ising? Excuse me. Most embarrassing moment at a restaurant. Hmm. Yeah, I, I knew you'd have to think about that one. Um, does it have to be for me? Because uh, uh, I'm yeah, thinking about yeah. it. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. Most embarrassing. Um, uh, you know, probably just the typical knock something over. But, you know, honestly, I... I Really haven't had it. Nothing. But I, I'm just what goes to my mind is a cheesecake factory situation where it was it was unfortunate, but there was a woman with like a white white suit on. Right. And uh she had a, a, a GI situation happen and she couldn't get to the ladies' restroom in time and it was horrific. It was horrific oh, for no. everybody. And even coming out, you have a white suit. So that's uh uh oh. something I felt for someone. That is the Cheesecake Factory. Yes. <laughs> How long did you live with your parents? How old were you when you finally moved out? Um, well, I'm upstairs. <laughs> right. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Last time you yelled at your wife. You know, she would say I yell at her every day because she claims as a drummer and being around Andy Oxman at Sound right. Studio that I'm half yeah. deaf. So she, right. she claims I yell every day, but yeah, you know, I can't think of, you know, why would you, you know, we're, we're coming up on ever, 17 years. Why, you, this why would you ever, Oh, let me see it again. I mean, I'm sure everyone has a cup with their yeah. spouse on it. Don't get me started on Michael Strahan. I don't, I don't like the guy, the guy, oh. the guy did Kelly wrong. Well, talk about so, and what I know a lot of people don't know about you, and because I just learned it recently, is that you were co-hosting a music award with now Ryan Seacrest, who Ryan took Seacrest. his place. Right. And the, the way I understood it from a, the production guy was he award. maybe made you an offer to to uh, maybe do a show with Ryan Seacrest, and you turned it down or something like that. I might not have it right, but. Yeah, you ended not, up with that thing with Kid Rock is all I remember. Yeah, that's that's not right at all. Uh, so it's the Radio Music Awards. <laughs> Thank and, you. And uh, uh, we, Ryan Seacrest and I were the backstage reporters. Okay. So, so we did that. And then uh, uh, I went to the show and I was seated next to Kid Rock, which, by the way, is in the book. You can get it at Uh <laughs> And I was seated next to uh Kid Rock, and it's the only time I've ever seen any celebrity anywhere at a fancy music award show bring in his own six pack of Bud Light, <laughs> which he which he shared. Which, so that okay, was, yeah. So so you you enjoyed the uh, beverage? Or two. I did with Kid Rock. <laughs> that was that was pretty wow. cool. Can you sing the Mizzou fight song? You know, I could, but um, I mean, we'd really like to hear it. What you may not know, I'll just come from, I do play the drums for the Mizzou alumni band. So I, I have, oh, I knew, yes. I, my specialty is the drums for that song versus, hooray, Mizzou, Mizzou, a boy from Mizzou, rah, 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 Mizzou, rah, Mizzou, rah, Mizzou, Tiger! There you go. Nice. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> and then final question on Got Your Six for Michael Seward. Have you ever flown with the Blue Angels? Most talked about cable company, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get we're gonna get some video up here and we're gonna see what's happening in our blue and yellow yeah. fighter planes that say angels, blue angel on it. And barrel rolls. 
We're gonna, right, we're gonna let, me, let me tell you let me tell you about century steak <laughs> thank you Cent century link cable all right so we we live in the country we have a horse ranch and when you live in a country first of all century link doesn't if you're a century link customer you already know that they don't care about you at all but if you live in the country and you're a century link customer they care about you even less so since we've lived at our house for eight years now, um, we have had a droopy cable, and that's not a medical condition. That's a cable that hangs over your driveway that is too low for any delivery trucks to make it in. Three times now, delivery trucks have snagged the cable and brought it down and torn the poles down. Every time I've called CenturyLink, it takes about an hour to get someone. And they may be or may not be uh, English speaking people, which is, I mean, I, hey, listen, it's, you know, whatever. Uh, but it's tough to get your message through, and they are a communications company. So, anyway, they, they don't rush right out. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like we've got cables across our driveway that are two feet above the ground now, can you please send someone out to fix mm -hmm. them? And they go, a technician will be with you a week from Saturday. I, and, I, you know, I, it's not good for anybody to not have cable, but your company's no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not talking about cable. media. I'm just I'm saying. Not, I, no, I'm not even talking about. No, no. Forget the cable. The cables that are in your driveway that are blocking people from coming down your driveway. Just to give you an idea. So this happened about two weeks ago where it happened again. A, a delivery truck snagged the cables, pulled them down, called. We had another delivery coming from somewhere else in about three days. I had to hire a guy with a bobcat to meet the delivery truck in the street, get the thing off the truck and bring it down my driveway. I mean, honestly, uh, you know, it's not good. So I've tried to call and get some results. And I think Andy has a little recording of the last time I tried to call. This was just a couple of weeks ago. Okay. Hi, James. This is Veronica. And I was on hold for I'm recording to my colleague. You're having an issue. And they've got this stupid phone. music that's on you just get so frustrated and then you and then you just get silly you've been on hold for 11 minutes and we're just getting started we know that at some point you will just give up and that's right where we want you if we don't put you on hold for at least 30 minutes we're not even trying Hey, what else are you going to do? You can't get out of your driveway. So, you know, so I, I tried that route and that didn't work and nobody ever right. picked up. So then I called Fox 4 because they've got a feature called Problem Solvers. Hmm, Stan Kramer, maybe. No. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, they've got to think of problem solvers and they, and they come out and, uh, and they solve your problem. Well, this is the first time this has ever happened to them. They said where they come out and the problem is solved immediately because they had to, they had to let CenturyLink know that they were following up on this story. So they came out to our house and, uh, uh, a wonderful uh, reporter, Ms. Ms. Jackson, uh, comes if out. If you're nasty. Thank you. And <laughs> she did such a great job. So she pulls into the driveway and, and gets out of her car and starts talking to us. Five minutes later, CenturyLink is on the site. And did she have to pull, did she have to drive over your cable to get into your driveway? No, no, no. Oh, oh, no. Because Where is that, is that up? Yeah, because I, I took a board and, okay. and put it under the, yeah. 
So anyway, but but so Guys, she welcome to Randy's. Let me get right. a board so you can come in. Yeah. To, right. You got to have a board lifting the cable over the driveway so people could get in. Welcome to Miller Estates. <laughs> <laughs> so so anyway, uh, five minutes later, uh, a, a Century Stink truck shows up, and. Uh, Talk about late breaking, fast acting. Yeah, and I don't know. I guess I guess it must have just been a coincidence, because the night, the day before I had been on their Facebook page even, and if you if you have some time on your hands, check out the CenturyLink uh, Facebook page. It's all complaints. I mean, it's miles and miles of complaints. So, Randy, could this be? Obviously, everywhere's understaffed right now. Fast food can't get places and. Clearly, there must be just uh, Jimmy and Eddie are the only people at CenturyLink right now driving around in a truck. Is that, is that what's happening? If that's true, then Jimmy and Eddie showed up right after Fox 4 did. <laughs> and, and, and they were the nicest. They were the nicest people. I mean, Mr. Miller, sorry for the inconvenience. Mm. Um, we're going to take care of that here this, this evening. And we're going to boost that line. Because I've done a little research and our cable line was hanging at 12 feet above the ground, okay? Most delivery trucks are 13 feet or, or, or higher. The math doesn't work out, does it? No. The minimum level that uh, is legally mandated for ca cable lines and uh, telephone lines and internet lines is 14 feet. Well, so, and the fact that you're a radio guy, people probably don't know that you've got an 18 foot cable on your car whipping thank around. You, thank you. So there's that. Thank you. <laughs> so, so this guy says, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna boost that thing up there to 15 feet," and I said, "Well, that would be great." I said, "That's a suggestion that I, that I've made several times." Oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get that done. And credit to the, the Fox 4 people, they stuck around for almost three hours waiting for them to come back and do this to see if they did it. And they did. Oh, wow. So I can't say, it, despite Mark Alford, I can't say enough great things about Fox 4. Was I mean, it a little odd? Was it a little odd, Randy, when um, um, Century Stink pulled up? That there's somebody in the passenger seat that's applying makeup to the to the CenturyLink guy for <laughs> yeah, the really, camera. Yeah. The, well, they, they did a nice piece on that. I, I think that we're gonna we're gonna run. Oh, yeah, see it. Yeah, Randy Miller, he's lived at this home for close to eight years, and you see this low-hanging power line right here. He says for most of that time, this has been a problem not only for him, but also his neighbors. This picture says it all. For any kind of telephone or internet lines, it's 14 feet minimum. Right now we're sitting at 12 feet and every time it sags, a delivery truck hits it and it and the whole thing comes down and the poles are ripped out of the ground. Something he says has happened three times and for years he's called CenturyLink, repeatedly asking crews to raise it, but it's gotten nowhere. Meanwhile, the cable's dropping lower and lower. We've got an RV that's ready to be picked up at the shop. We can't get it under the wire. Not only a problem for Randy, but his neighbors, who sometimes go weeks without any internet service. It started the 17th of last month, and this is the 13th. <laughs> it has been going on for this long. Between both of them, complaint after complaint. Complained to them a million times. We got the Jackson County Sheriff's Office involved. They called them. Still nothing. So he called Fox 4 for help, and we called CenturyLink. A CenturyLink truck. Wow. When we arrived, CenturyLink crews weren't too far behind. Can Fox Ford just stay at our house? It, this is unbelievable. I have never seen, number one, I've never seen them come out like this, but, but offer to do something and, and smiling and shaking hands. This is a new company. <laughs> the technician reviewing the area and told him the low-hanging line will be fixed by the end of the day. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> And for Bob, the internet too. And you see the crew, they finally made their way out here and they're working on raising the power lines to 14 feet. I was told by a CenturyLink rep that this was most likely caused the latest time by one of the recent storms. Sharifa Jackson, Fox 4, working for you. So yeah, thanks to Fox 4. So good. So great for them to do that. Man, 
that was that was just I mean you talk about problem solvers and by the way as you saw in the piece there our neighbor Bob who has CenturyLink internet has not had it for a month they were able they were able to fix his problem well Randy um, kudos to you I would expect that you'll find uh, somebody showing up with a pay it forward cash for you in <laughs> yeah. the morning. If, if Kathy Quinn steps one Kathy. foot on my property. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Fantastic. Well, I think that's going to do it for, uh, for this episode of Randy Miller radio. What more, what more could you do? Seriously? I mean, we're, we'll be Book, back. call for action. Uh, I mean, Blue really, Angels well, got it all. Right. Randy, Randy Miller Radio. Dot com. Woo! Randy Miller Radio. Dot com.